Good day, senior high school students. This time, we'll be discussing the third lesson in your subject, Understanding Culture, Society, and Politics. The title of our lesson is Looking Back at Human Biocultural and Social Evolution. For our objectives, at the end of the lesson, we'll be able to familiarize with the biological and cultural evolution of early to modern humans, grasp the significance of human material remains, and factual evidence in interpreting cultural and social, including political and economic processes, acknowledge national, local, and specialist museums and archaeological and historical sites as venues to appreciate and reflect to the complexities of biocultural and social evolution as part of being and becoming human. And our guide questions, what makes human beings on an important component in the development of early society? How do early societies differ from one another? Do you know who is on the picture? Can you recognize him? Yes, you are correct. He is Charles Darwin, known for his evolution of man, theory. When we say evolution, it is a natural process of biological changes occurring in a population across successive generations, according to Banaag. For two million years, man in the form of early hominid was a herd, tribal animal, primarily a herd, herbivore. A hominid is any member of the biological family Hominidae. These are the great apes, living and extinct. At present, there are humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans. The word hominid has been used in various ways. The classification of the great apes has been revised several times in the last few decades. Would you agree with that? When according to most of any faith, as evident in the Bible of Christians, that God created man in his own image, and also stated in the Quran of our Islam brothers and sisters. But why Darwin's theory is still being studied? Because evolution helps us identify and analyze man's physiological development, which is important in his subsistence. Let's start with the first species. Homo habilis, a species with a brain of a broccus area which is associated in modern humans, the first to make stone tools, also known as handyman, lived 2.4 to 1.4 million years ago scavenging for food. Homo rudolfensis, characterized by longer face, large smaller, and premolar teeth having larger brain case, lived in 1.9 to 1.8 million years ago. Homo erectus, upright man, with body proportion similar to that of modern humans. They were first hunters with improvised tools such as axe and knives, and the first to produce fire live 189 to 143,000 years ago. Homo heidelbergensis, with large brow ridge and short white bodies, first of early humans to live in polar climates, first to hunt larger animals on roping bases, using spears and to construct human shelter, live 700,000 to 200,000 years ago. Homo floresiensis, a species nicknamed Hobbit due to their small stature with a height of more or less 3 feet, lived 95,000 to 17,000 years ago in the island of Florence, Indonesia. Homo sapiens, the species name means wise man, appeared 200,000 years ago and is believed the present human race belongs to this species. Homo sapiens neanderthalensis or neanderthalman 
First to practice the burial of dead, hunting, gathering food, and sewing clothes from animal skin using bone needles. Live about 200,000 to 28,000 years ago. Homo sapiens sapiens, the last species. As Cro-Magnon characterized to be anatomically modern humans, first to produce art in cave, painting, and crafting decorated tools and accessories. Lived in the last ice age of Europe 40,000 years to 10,000 years ago. After seeing those species, do you believe or disagree with the theories? Remember, animals can evolve over millions of years because they do not live that long. Look at the snail that lived in 555 million years ago. Has the same physical appearance as of what have now in the present time. Same as the scorpions. And come to think of it, if we really exist from evolution, then why are there still chimpanzees and orangutans? They should disappear already. Again, the study on evolution helps us identify and analyze man's physiological development, which is important in this subsistence. Okay, now let's proceed to social evolution that is more in reality that we are ourselves convinced that possibly happened. Known as man's cultural evolution, it refers to the changes or development in cultures from a simple form to a more complex form of human culture. Scientists study the cultural evolution of humans by analyzing the tools they use. Now let's move on to the cultural period, time frame, and its cultural development. From Paleolithic Age or Old Stone Age, traditionally coincided with the first evidence of tool construction and use by Humusum 2.5 million years ago. Use of pebble tools, learn to live in caves, discover the use of fire, develop small sculpture and elemental painting, incised designs and reliefs on the walls of caves. While in Neolithic Age or the New Stone Age occurred sometime about 10,000 BCE. Stone tools were shaped by polishing or grinding, settlement in permanent villages, dependence on domesticated plants and animals, appearance of such as crops and moving, and food producing cultures. To simply differentiate cultural evolution from Paleolithic to Neolithic age, in Paleolithic age, the stone tools were unpolished, while in Neolithic, Stone tools were polished already. In Paleolithic, they have hunting and gathering society, while in Neolithic age, they domesticated already plants and animals. And in Paleolithic age, people live in a nomadic way of living, while in Neolithic age, they live in permanent places. So therefore, the characteristics of human society is a social system. A society is relatively large, society recruits most of its members from within, a society sustains itself across generations, a society's members share a culture, and a society occupies a territory. Let's analyze some types of societies and characteristics. Hunting and food gathering, earliest form of human society, people survive by foraging for vegetable food and small game fishing, hunting larger wild animals and collecting shellfish. They subsisted from day to day on whatever was available. They used tools made of stone woods and booms. Horticultural societies. People learned to use human muscle power and handheld tools to cultivate fields. Classified as subsistence farming and surplus farming. Subsistence farming involves only producing enough food to feed the group. The settlements are small. Neighborhood is solid. Political organization is confined in the village. Authority is based on positions inherited by males through the kinship system. Surplus farming. 
it was practiced in thickly populated and permanent settlements. There was occupational specialization with prestige differences. Social stratification as was well established. The community tended to be structured with kinship relations that are male dominated. Pastoral societies. It relied on herding and the domestication of animals for food and clothing to satisfy the greater needs of the group. Most pastoralists were nomads who followed their herds in a never-ending quest for pasture and water. It was organized along male-centered kinship groups. It was usually united under strong political figures. However, centralized political leadership did not occur. Agricultural societies. These societies were characterized by the use of the plant and farming. Creation of the irrigation system provided farming enough surplus for the community. Ever-growing populations came together in road river valley system. Those who controlled access to arable land and its use became rich and powerful since they could demand the payment of taxes and political support. By taxing the bulk of agricultural surplus, the political leaders could make the bureaucracies implement their plans and armies to protect their privileges. Social classes became entrenched in the state evolved. Industrial societies, second to the last, it is characterized by more than just the use of mechanical means of production. It constitutes an entirely new form of society that requires an immense, mobile diversity specialized, high-skilled and well-coordinated labor force. Creates a highly organized system of exchange between suppliers of raw materials and industrial manufacturers. Industrial societies are divided along class lines. Industrialism brought about a tremendous shift of populations. Kinship plays a smaller role in Potomac public affairs. Industrial societies are highly secularized. The predominant form of social and political organization in industrial societies is the workers. And the last society we had is the post-industrial societies. It depends on the specialist knowledge to bring about continuing progress in technology. It is characterized by the spread of computer industries. Knowledge and information are the hallmarks of the society. It resulted in the homogenization of social relations among individuals and the interaction between humans and the normal environment. Do not forget to accomplish their exercises. See you in our next lesson. Thank you for listening.